Hello and welcome to episode 131 of the Mark and Me podcast. As always, I'm your host Mark. Joining me on today's episode is the amazing actress Gillian White. We get to sit down and talk all about her early days when she was in music videos alongside Dr. Dre and LL Cool J, at such a young age working with the amazing Spike Lee and Quentin Tarantino when she was in Jackie Brown. And we also get to talk about her brand new film, Take Back, where she gets to act alongside her husband, Michael Jai White, and the amazing, the legend, Mickey Rourke. So stick around for that interview. It'll be coming up in just a couple of minutes' time. But you know the score by now. I like to touch base and talk about my last episode. I was joined by Adam Egypt Mortimer, an amazing writer, an incredible film director, and the response was great. It was one of those interviews, and I've said it many times, I wish I'd got longer with the guest. And hopefully, if all goes well, Adam will be coming back in the near future so we get to talk a lot more about films. But I love the response, thanks for everyone that took the time to listen, and those people that then went and checked out the amazing Daniel Isn't Real and fed back saying I've bought the DVD or I've bought the Blu-ray since listening and fell in love with the film. That's awesome. That's all I can ask for. And again, thanks so much for listening. But as I said, today's episode is a big one. I'm joined by the amazing, absolutely awesome Gillian White. So I think the best thing to do is get straight to the interview. So here's me and Gillian talking all things film. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Yeah, absolutely. I'm loving the background. I'm loving the guitar and all the great stuff. It's amazing. My background's boring. I'm just in like a bedroom. (laughs) This is one of my favorite spots in the house. So I'm like, I got it. This is my favorite spot. So I got to have it off for all my Zooms. (laughs) That's incredible. For anyone that's tuned in today um, that wants to get to know you, can you tell me at sort of what age and you discovered that you wanted to be an actress? I know you started out in music videos, but at what point was it you wanted to make that change to become an actress? Well, the funny thing is I wanted to be an actress when I was a little kid, I used to put on plays for my parents. I would get all the neighborhood kids and I go, let's act this out and let's do this in the street and let's put on a, a show for the neighbors. And it was always me initiating things like that. And so when I got in grade school and high school, I was in all the drama clubs and the plays. And so I always had that acting bug. But then I decided I wanted to be a FBI agent. <laughs> so As you do. I got a, yeah, I got a scholarship. Um, and I went to uh, college and I studied administration of justice, but I minored in dramatic arts because I still wanted to, you know, play with yeah. my acting bug I had. And um, yeah, it's weird. It's weird because with the music videos, I only use that as a little, little stepping stone yeah. to get my face out there so that I could get into acting. That was really what I wanted to do. I've asked this to a lot of actors because I wanted to be a musician when I grew up. I wanted to kind of be like the next Kurt Cobain and the next Nirvana and all this sort of stuff. Were your your family and parents supportive of you because it's such a hard business to kind of break into? Were they like, well, well, actually you need to get a proper job or something to fall back on? Or were they happy and supportive for you to go and kind of aim and reach for your dreams? They were the very supportive aim for your dreams. kind of. amazing. Yeah, I was very blessed. Um, No matter what I did in my life, they supported me. Yeah. And it was never don't do that. You know, you won't make enough money or need stability. It was never that it was whatever your heart desires, whatever you're passionate about, go for it. Just always put your best effort into it. So yeah, I always had their support. So it was awesome. I had a great mom and dad. That's amazing. Obviously, looking back at your CV and some of the amazing experiences you've had, you've got to work with people like Quentin Tarantino, which is on everyone's kind of aim and hit list, and Spike Lee. And to see these incredible directors that you've got to work with, that must have been like a dream come true. Is it one of those moments when you're on stage and you're kind of there and you're thinking to yourself, I need to pinch myself? Absolutely. And this was, and, and working with Quentin and Spike were very early in my career. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, like how lucky am I that this is right around the time I'm really just getting into acting that I was able to get these roles. Um, But yeah, it was those kind of moments like, I can't believe, but I have to admit being so green and so fresh into it, I was so nervous. Oh my God, I was so nervous in front of Quentin. I was so nervous in front of Spike because both times I had to audition in front of both of them to get the parts. It was a little nerve wracking, but I guess I did it good enough to get the roles. (laughs) It's just incredible. And I mean, to get to do that at such a young age, perhaps that's probably better because you're younger and you're probably more up for the challenge. You're kind of, if you were to do it now, you'd probably be like, you try and talk yourself out of it because it's such a big deal, you know? 
Exactly. No, you're so correct about that. I think when I was younger, I was more open and I just didn't care. It's like I didn't put too much on anything. And uh, yeah, I think it was better that happened back then. And at the moment, you're promoting the new film Take Back, where you get to work alongside your husband. And it's amazing to see that. I mean, me and my partner will argue over making breakfast. You know, that would be something that we could get attention from. But to know that you on set on such a production with people like Mickey Rourke and much, there must be so much pressure. I mean, how do you find that kind of incredible balance to be able to go to work, do your job and then switch off and come home and still be, OK, now we're going to go back into our normal lives and normal roles? You know, what's, 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 a, what's a blessing is that I am a very balanced person just in general. Yeah. I, I've always been like that my whole life. That's how I was raised to just be like this, you know? And, and so because I have that foundation stability in me to be able to take on so many different things, you know, I am a mother in real life. I am a wife. I'm a businesswoman. I, I have a career and, and, and Zara, the character in the movie, that's what she is too. She's a mom. She's a stepmom. She's a lawyer, you know, and, and, and she's a certified badass that has a, you know, a past that comes back to haunt her. And, it's very easy for me to work with my husband. He's so supportive and I know he always has my back. We never argue, uh, there's no egos. So when he and I work together, it's always a really great experience. And I went into this film just knowing this is the lead role. I have James Russo, my husband, Michael J. White and Mickey Rourke, you know? <laughs> and so I'm like, I went in a little nervous but I was like, uh, shake that off. You're gonna do great. Just do what you do best. Yeah. and. Working with someone like Mickey Rourke, I mean, one of my favorite films is The Wrestler. I think the way he does that performance from start to finish is just outstanding. Does it take a moment to kind of step back and just be okay on set? Or do you still get those moments where it's like, oh my God, it's Mickey Rourke. I need to get pose myself. You know what's funny? That always comes after. Yeah. So I'm in that work mode, I'm I'm in it. And then it's like, when we're done and it's wrapped and I go home and I'm back in my hotel room, I'm like, did I just do a scene with Mickey Rourke? Like. God, like, you know, that's when it kind of hits after yeah. um, the moment, but, you know, he was so great in it and, and he's so fun to work with because there were scenes where he was just improvising and throwing stuff at me, just making up stuff to make me pissed off in certain scenes. And it just worked. It worked. And I just went right along with it. I was like, okay, he's going to make me really angry, which is going to bring me more into the, how this character should be. A lot of people that listen to this podcast are people that are studying film or going to film school and they will listen today for inspiration. And one thing I wanted to know is what advice do you give to these young people that are trying to get into the film world and the the film industry, which is so hard to break through and kind of make a name for yourself? Because it's not the easiest one to get into, but it's such a successful kind of industry where you can do so well once you kind of get in the door of the industry. Yeah, my advice is always, there's three things I always like to focus on. One is make sure that it's truly your passion. Yeah. A lot of people get into this because they want to be famous or they want to, you know, or money or whatever comes along with being a celebrity. And that's not what it's about. It's really being passionate about something and really putting your best foot forward into every character that you play and not the outcome of it, which is the fame or the money or, you know, whatever. That's always my first thing. The second thing is you have to have tough skin. Yeah. You have to, because you're going to get way more no's than yeses. You're going to get a lot more doors slammed in your face than open. And a lot of people who don't have tough skin, they, they internalize and they take it personal. You can't ever take anything in this business personal. No. Sometimes there's things that are just out of your control. You, you go in, you do your best. And if it's not for you, then, hey, on to the next. It wasn't meant to be. You got to kind of take on that mentality because it will break, break you down if you take everything in and take everything personal. And the... Um, the last thing I always say, okay, I said internal, is um, just make sure that you always stay grounded. Yeah. It's very important to stay grounded and, and be true to yourself. You know, always put a little bit of yourself into everything. And I, I just think that's so important. You know, just always be you and put yourself into the character. And I think that's like, you're always going to come out on top. Get in that resilience where you keep bouncing back. And you said there's a lot more no's than yeses. How do you find to kind of grow that skin and become so much stronger? Because, you know, some people can get to the point where you are told no and you just can't pick yourself up. What, what do you do that kind of keeps building yourself to make you stronger and come back stronger? What, what, what do you, where do you start with something like that after you can get so much rejection? 
Well, I admit it is tough in the beginning because yeah. no one ever told me that. No. So, you know, I kind of went in like, Ooh, I'm just going to get parts and make money, you know, and, <laughs> and you know, of course that wasn't the case, <laughs> but, um, you know, I think it came in time when I just realized, you know, when I did realize it's not in, it's a lot of times, even with certain roles, you could be perfect for a role, your look, your acting, your personality, everything. Yeah. But want somebody who has a bigger name or they want, or someone knows someone who's a friend with a producer, or it could be anything. And so you have to go, you know, it's not me. Yeah. It's just other things that, you know, I have no control over. And that, and when I started looking at it that way and, and, just leaving stuff at the door, just going, okay, whatever, on to the next. That's when it helped me because I started letting go of all that staying in my head, like, oh my God, I wasn't good enough. Or what did I do wrong? Or they didn't like me. And, you know, once I let go of all that, I actually started to be a better actress. And what's the future looking like? Obviously, we're still in the UK here. We're in lockdown. Everything's gone on kind of either a hold or there's been major delays with a lot of productions. But is it kind of a good time for you to reflect and take time out and maybe think about what you want to do with future projects? Have you been able to do some writing or producing or other projects that you kind of not had the time to get around? Or is it just a case of waiting to see what's kind of going to shape for you in the future? Well, it's, it's so strange because during this whole pandemic, things luckily didn't really slow down for me too no. much. Um, like Take Back was shot during COVID, you know, we just had to make changes and, 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 you know, we had restrictions we had to work with. I filmed i I'm on a Tyler Perry TV show in my second season as a recurring character. We went and shot that for three weeks, you know, under his Tyler Perry bubble, yeah. you know, and so things kept happening for me. Um, but the good thing is I, 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 I did produce, um, a, a film that my husband's working on called the outlaw Johnny black. So that's my first venture into, uh, being a producer so that was kind of awesome exciting. And, yeah and um and and yeah writing too I love writing uh so it, this time was great for me just to be home with my family yeah really take advantage of that and just also like you said focus on kind of jumping into your things and my final question is we try and make the episodes quite exclusive by letting the guests choose the outro music to the episode so you get to choose any song in the entire world now if I gave you too long to think about it you'd be in a situation where you'd be like waking up at two in the morning thinking oh why didn't I pick this song or I know. <laughs> getting it down from a list but is there a song that means a lot to you that when I first asked the question instantly comes to your kind of heart and soul that you think would be the perfect song choice for you to be the outro episode yeah and it's really funny because if you were to ask my kids this they would know right away they call it mom's happy song it's um lovely day by bill withers Amazing. i just love that song it's it's uh it always no matter what mood i'm in it always uplifts my spirit it's just something about that song the words the the, the, the rhythm the beat of it it's like it's just it it's my happy song it makes me feel good. So no matter how I'm feeling, that's a song I put on my playlist and just start like, hey, and it just kind of, I start dancing around, having a good time. And, and so that would be my first go-to song. I like that you knew it straight away. Some people take ages. I do. Oh, I've got and I do I have a wide range of songs that I love, but that one, all that's my feel good song. So that's, that's an important one. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you. Thank you for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I wish you all the luck with this release. Um, obviously, in the UK now, we're going to get taped back. And I'm looking forward to a lot of listeners now going and checking this film out, seeing your lead performance and hopefully getting some incredible feedback. And um, I just want to thank you for your time. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the podcast. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. So there it is. There's my interview with me and Gillian. One of those interviews, and I say it time and time again, but this one especially, I wish I had along with the guest. We're just getting warmed up. You can hear the rapport's really great from the moment we start talking. And I felt I've only just got to the conversation and our time's up. But that's the way the industry works. And sometimes I really do wish I had along with a guest. And hopefully Gillian will come back for more. But I'm grateful for the time I got. And I felt that the interview was fantastic, really positive, And she's such a lovely person. So thanks Gillian for coming on the show. If you'd like to support the podcast, I do have a website. If you're listening for the very first time, jump on markandme.com. On there, there's links to my Facebook, my Instagram, and my Twitter page. There's an email address on there if you want to give me some feedback, and I share all the feedback I get with my guests and personally reply to every tweet, 
every Facebook comment, every DM on Instagram, and I take a lot of pride in that. So if you are reaching out for the first time, let me know and I'll promise you, you'll get a response from me. If you want to support the podcast on another level, I do have a Patreon page. On there, you can subscribe every month and that money goes directly back into the podcast. I don't make money from it myself and it means I can host the podcast on all these different channels, get out and do more and more interviews and invest in some incredible prizes for you guys out there. In the last month alone, I've given away 10 posters from the amazing Vice Press. They have been so good to Mark and me and they'll continue working with me in the near future. So check out on their website, buy yourself some amazing posters and stick around next month for even more prizes from those amazing guys. I'll be back in only a few days time with a brand new episode. I say it every time but Mark and me is absolutely manic at the moment. I'm conducting four or five interviews a week. I'm putting out two episodes every single week and it's still not enough. I've still got a backlog of people to get through and even more going into the diary. So it's absolutely full on. But the good news for you guys listening at home, it means loads more episodes are coming your way. So I'll be back in a few days time. So until then, take care and thank you for listening. And I know it's gone